All right, we're going to talk about parametric equations and what they're often used for is to describe the path of a projectile. Um, now, there is a common set of parametric equations we use to describe this. Um, it says here, a projectile is launched a height of h feet above the ground. The angle that it's launched at is theta <clears throat> with the horizontal um, ground. The initial velocity is v naught feet per second. The path of the projectile can be described by this parametric model like where t is the number of times in sec time in seconds. So it's x equals v naught. Remember that's our initial velocity or the starting velocity. Cosine theta is our angle at which it's launched times t. y is equal to h which was the initial height, the height from which it's launched. So if it's launched from the flat ground that would be zero. But if it's launched from a height above ground, we would put that here. Um, plus, again, v naught, which is our starting velocity, sine of our angle theta times t minus 16t squared. And this is just kind of the standard set of parametric equ equations we use. Now, we're asked to use a graphing utility to graph the path of the projectile launch from ground level um, at the specified values for theta and v naught. In each case, um, use the graph to approximate. Now, here's what we're going to approximate, the maximum height and the range of the projectile. Now, if you don't have a graphing calculator, I, have, I will be using the graph, online graphing calculator at this um, address. Um, I looked through several online graphing calculators, and this was the one that works the best. It doesn't have a trace function, which causes a little bit of trouble, uh, and it also only does um, theta in terms of radians. So when you're given a degree measure, the first thing I would have to do here is convert this to radians. Okay, so remember to do that. We multiply by pi over 180, which would give me 30 pi over 180, and I can reduce that. 30 goes into 180 six times. So I'm going to use that my theta is pi over six. And again, the only reason for that is that the calculator I'm using um, only graphs in radians. Um, so I have to use it that way. Okay. Well, the first thing you're going to have to do is write down the parametric equations you'll be using for x and for y. Now for my x, it's supposed to equal v naught. So my initial velocity, um, which they are telling me is 94 feet per second. So I would have 94 times cosine of my angle, which was 30 degrees, which again, I'm going to use radian measure, so pi over six radians, t. Here's my first um, set for my parametric equation. x is equal to 94 cosine pi over six, t. And I need one more parenthesis there. Okay, y equals h, the initial height, um, it says it's launched from ground level, so this is zero. So I'm not going to worry about this part of the equation because it's launched from ground. So then I have my v naught, which again was 94 feet per second, sine of the angle. The angle remains the same, so pi over 6, t minus 16t squared. So those are my two equations. I'm now going to open up the graphing calculator so we can plug those in. And again, what we'll be looking for are the maximum height and the range of the projectile. All right, so as you can see, I've opened to that website with the graphing calculator. My mode, I don't want a function graphing calculator. I want parametric. And notice it will give you x of t and y sub t. Okay, in those, I'm going to fill in my information. Now you have to be careful here and make sure you put all the parentheses that we need. So remember, we were putting in 94. Okay, cosine of, and remember we wanted to put it in radians, so that was our pi over 6, parenthesis to end that, and then our parenthesis that goes with our original, okay, and then t. Down here, I needed 94 for my y, 94 sine, in parentheses, again, I put my pi over 6, okay, and then we do our parentheses to end that, and then the second one here, t, and this had minus 16t squared, so then I put minus 16t, um, 
that's the little caret button we use for exponent and then squared. So I have both equations in here, and then I'm going to click plot graph. Now notice I go way off my graph, so what I need to do is adjust my window here. Um, and my minimum, I'm going to leave my minimum x at negative 5. That's going to work just fine. I'm going to set my maximum at, say, 200 to start with, and I may need to adjust that. For my y, my minimum's at negative 5. I'm going to set my maximum at, say, 150, and I'll adjust if I need to based on what comes out. For my t, time is going to start at 0, and I'll say I'll go to 10 seconds just in case. Okay, and then I update. So now notice my I have what looks like the path of a projectile. The, the projectile goes up in the air and then starts to come back down. Now notice here my y value that I had for my <laughs> window is way too high. It doesn't even go past 50. So I'm going to come back and adjust my maximum y down to 50. Okay. My x is not far enough. It doesn't hit the ground. And I need, for my maximum range, I need to know where that hits the ground. So I'm going to go ahead and put in um, 250, just to, an update. OK, so this is a pretty good window. Um, notice I can now see where the projectile hits the ground. That's good. Um, I can see my maximum. You might want to bring your maximum y down a little bit. Um, I'll bring it down to say 35 and see what happens there. Okay, so yeah, I can see the top still, so that's good. All right, our questions were, what is the maximum height of the projectile and how far does it travel? The max, what's its range? So that means how far does it travel before it hits the ground? So the maximum height would be the peak up here, and this is where not having a tracing tool makes this a little more difficult because we really just have to estimate our answer. Um, so up here I look over and I'm just above 34, I'm not to 35, I would round that off to 34 feet. Okay, so the maximum height is 34 feet. The range for my projectile, again that means how far does it go, this is its height and this is the distance it travels, it's almost like you're looking at the projectile's path from the side as you see it launched. Okay. So here's where it would hit the ground, and I want to know how far it traveled before it hit the ground. Now here's 200, and here's 250. Notice there's little marks here. This is 210, 220, 230, 240. So it's not quite 240. I'm going to call that 239 feet. And again, if I had a tracing tool, that would help because it would tell me the exact value, but this calculator doesn't have a trace. Um, for parametrics, unfortunately. So we're just going to go ahead and estimate. So again, our maximum height we found up here was 34 feet, and our range we said was probably about 239. Okay, so as we come back here to our question, to answer our question, the maximum height we saw on our graph was at about 34 feet. So there's our first answer. And the range of the projectile, the distance it traveled before it hit the ground, we found to be about 239 whoops, feet. Okay. So let's do one.